let's create an abstract data type to store employee details. Now, what are the details of an employee that I want to store? I want to store EID, e name, and salary. I want to I want to store the details of an employee which comprises of these three attributes at one at one point, right? Like at one single place. At one single place, I want to store all these three attributes. Now, do I have a built-in data type available to store employee details in this format? The answer is no. So what do I have to do? I have to create a data type of my own. This data type that I create of my own is known as an abstract data type. And how do I create an abstract data type in C programming? I create an abstract data type in C programming using structures. So let's define the structure for this. So I'll say struct and then I'll give it a name. Let's call it employee. So this becomes the name of my data type. Now this data type, this data type, or let's say variables of this data type will have three parts, the EID, the E name and the salary. Since there are three parts, this data type should have three members. This structure should have three members. Each member will represent each of these employee details. So EID, let's say the employee ID is a number. So I'll take integer type for it. The employee name is of course a string, which in C programming is represented as a character array. And the salary is again a whole number. So I'll choose a data type of int for it. This will create my data type. This will create my abstract data type. Now I can create a variable of this data type. How do I create a variable? I write struct employee. So struct employee represents the data type. And then I give the name of the variable. So the name of the variable, let's say, is E1. And let's say I give it values directly. So I say 1. Harry, salary of 25,000, okay? So this will create a variable called E1 of type employee having these three values. So that means E1, E1 has three members, EID, E name, and salary. So by one, I mean give E1's EID, give E1's EID a value of one. Give E1's E name a value of Harry. Give E1's salary a value of 25,000. Okay. If you compare, if you compare this, this part, this variable declaration part with a declaration of a variable of a built-in type, you can understand a few things. See, let's say I write int sum equal to zero. So let's say compare the whole thing. Okay. Let's compare the whole thing. Okay. So... Yeah. So if you compare these two, you'll find that your struct employee, your struct employee, this part, struct employee is same as your data type int. It's same as your data type int. Similarly, your variable name here, your variable name E1 is same as the variable name sum here. Now, since sum is a variable of type int, by definition of int data type in C, you will understand that variables of type int can store only one integer value at a time. So I'm able to store only one integer value, which is zero for the variable sum. Now this part, this part of sum equal to zero, this part, this part is similar to this part, the values, right? So I've created a variable of my, I've created, sorry, sorry. I, I have created a data type of my own called employee. And in this data type, in variables of this data type, I'm able to store three values at a time. If you look at any built-in data type, if you create a variable of any built-in data type, you'll understand that you will be able to store only one value at a time, okay? So this is the flexibility that user-defined data types offer. You can create a data type 
according to your application. My application requires three values to be stored at one point or let's say I want three values to be referred to by a common name. So what, what should I do? I, you take any built-in data type, I can refer to only one value at a time. But if I take in a user defined data type, I can refer to three values at a time. Okay, or any number of values that I want. So this is the flexibility and power that user defined data types add to our programming. So I hope this helps. If you have any doubts, please feel free to mention in the comment section below. I hope this helps. See you in the next video.